This is the brand new 2024 Kawasaki Eliminator 450, and I'm just going to come straight out and address the elephant in the room. It bears an uncanny resemblance to the Honda Rebel 500. So that leaves a lot of people questioning, is the new bike just Kawasaki's blatant attempt at copying Honda's homework, or is the new bike here to actually eliminate the Rebel 500? See what I did there? Eliminate? Eliminator? And not to toot my own horn, but I figured that given the fact that I've owned two Rebel 500s in the past, and I rode here on my SCL 500, which is Honda's new scrambler built around the Rebel 500 platform, there's nobody better for the job of the comparison than myself. So today we're going to take a look at the new Eliminator, we're going to take it for a quick first ride, and we'll see how it stacks up against the Rebel 500. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Shout out to Preston Power Sports here in Easton, Maryland for the exclusive first look at the bike, and shout out to NBT Clothing for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Life of Birch, I'm Birch, and before we take a look at the new Honda Saki Reb Eliminator, let's first take a look at the spec sheets so I can show you just how similar they are. And if you watch this channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm not a specs guy by any means, I'm more of a feelings guy, you know? How does the bike speak to my soul? So the fact that I actually went out of my way to do research to show how closely the specs line up should really tell you something. Okay, so the Rebel 500 and the Eliminator 450 are both parallel twin motors mated to a six-speed transmission, both with slipper clutches. The Rebel is 471 cc's, whereas the Eliminator is 451 cc's, so only a 20 cc difference. Kawasaki claims 31.7 pound-foot of torque, whereas Honda claims 31.9 pound-foot of torque, and Honda claims 46 horsepower, whereas Kawasaki doesn't have any official numbers out, but I've seen guesses anywhere between 44 and 49. Both bikes have 41 millimeter front suspension and dual rear shocks. Only the difference is that the Rebel 500 is going to have 0.8 inches more travel in the front and 0.6 inches more travel in the rear. Both bikes have a single front brake and a single rear brake. The specs on those are very similar as well. The seat heights are within 2 inches of each other. The weights of the bikes are within 20 to 30 pounds of each other. And the prices are within 200 to 300 dollars of each other depending on which model you get. And even then you'll notice that the Rebel 500, and I also have to point out this is actually a Rebel 300, but the dimensions are the exact same, so just picture this bike but with that motor in it. But anyway, the Rebel 500 does not come with a passenger seat kit. It's actually a $140 option from the factory, whereas the Eliminator, no matter what model you get, the base, the ABS, or the SE, comes with a passenger seat kit. So, you know, you're spending $140 bucks already to get the 500 up to the same status as this, so it almost feels like the price is just dead even. And it's also probably worth mentioning that this Rebel 300, or 500 as we're calling it, is not the SE model, whereas this one is the SE model. So the Eliminator that we're looking at here has all the bells and whistles. I think the SE model model, all that that really entails is the headlight cowl, the fork boots right here to black everything out, and the USB charging port right here, which eh, we'll talk about that. But it's also worth mentioning that one of the Rebel 500s that I owned in the past was the SE model that did have the headlight cowl as well as a blacked out fork, so that's more of an even comparison. So that should paint the picture for you guys, just how similar these things are, not even from a visual standpoint, which I'm sure is pretty obvious so far, but like mechanically, specs wise, they are almost identical. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, Eliminator and kind of see what we're working with, and uh, I haven't really given it a good once over, so we'll kind of explore it together. So I'll say, first thing that I noticed when I was looking at this bike, in pictures you can obviously tell the extreme similarities between them, but then in person you start picking up on even more similarities. The frames are extremely similar, they're both uh, trellis frames or whatever they're considered, you know, they don't have like the frame that comes all the way down to the bottom, the engine is kind of a stressed member of everything, and not only that, but it even has the same kind of triangle here with the little plastic piece covering it, same as the Rebel has, and you have the plastic piece up here, which is covered here as well. But with that said, that was the first thing that I noticed because it looks kind of cheap and chintzy on the Kawasaki, I think, and in particular this one right here. It's kind of weird because lots of this stuff on the bike is flat black, like even these covers are, but then this is gloss black and just kind of makes it look, I don't know, cheap, especially since it doesn't come all the way down to cover that portion of the V, but then extends out here. I don't know, it's kind of weird, you know? Like, on the Rebel, it fills in the entire little section of the frame real nice, but then over here, like, why do we have this gap here, you know? But with that said, I really like the fact that the headers, although they look similar to the Rebels, they're actually, like, stainless steel or whatever. They're not painted black, and I really like that, because with how much bikes are blacked out nowadays, which I can't say anything, because I went out of the way to black out mine, but it's nice to have that pop of not black, you know? It really, like, draws your eyes to how aggressive the exhaust looks, so I like that. And also, when you look at it, it's pretty obvious to me anyway that this is kind of more sporty looking. It has sharper edges, you know? Like, once you get rid of this fender, some sort of fender delete, it comes to, like, a tip right there, whereas the Rebels just kind of, like, whomps over like a normal fender. 
here this almost has like v-rod feel to it you know but with that said also it's kind of weird that it just has this like dorito missing right here that's kind of strange and speaking of the kind of sporty pointy look i was also surprised that this looks much longer than i was expecting it to that's what she said let me check my stats so i'm not lying to you so the wheelbase of the eliminator is only 1.1 inches longer than the rebel but i feel like because of the pointy lines and everything like that it makes it look a lot longer than the rebel you can also see that the tank sits much lower and then on the rebel the tank sits up higher so i think just like the low stature of the bike and the pointy angles makes it look a lot longer and sleeker than the rebel the rebel looks a little bit more like bubbly in comparison you can see from the back they both have led lights all around very similar setup but again these are kind of like more pointy whereas the rebel's more rounded and then from the front again leds all around more pointed than the rebel and kind of going with that pointy not so bubbly theme you'll see the headlight was really interesting i wasn't expecting it the leds are actually right there and then on the other side of it and then they just kind of reflect out of there whereas with any of the rebels they have these like little dots there so i really like kind of the sharp lines that they decided to go with on this and i like the fact that they actually carried it through the entire bike right off the jump you can tell this seat looks to be a lot cushier than the rebels which is one of the big complaints about the stock rebel 300 and 500 seats so i'm really interested to see how that feels when we get out riding and then another thing that i like about the eliminator is that it has more tech than the rebel does i'm still not exactly sure how all of it works but i know that it has some sort of smartphone connectivity so you can see already you got the bluetooth flashing right there waiting for your phone to pair up and the way that i understand it is there's some sort of kawasaki app that you can connect to the bike and i think it tracks your rides and you can change the display through the app and i'm not sure what else it does but just the fact that it exists obviously shows that there's much more tech in this than there is in the rebel it's also immediately noticeable when you look at this that the display has a lot more going on than the rebel does i don't think we have a key in that but i'll turn on my display to show you for one thing you notice immediately that it has an rpm gauge which i really like that's one of my big gripes about the rebel line at least the 300 and 500 is that it doesn't have an rpm gauge and i'm also surprised that it revs out that far from what i understand this bike has uh essentially like the rebel 400 motor in it but they bored it out to a 450 and tuned it for more low-end torque or something like that so it's essentially the ninja 400 motor so i guess that makes sense why it revs out so far but that's cool to see then you got your gear indicator rebel has that as well gas gauge obviously the rebel has that so very similar readout the only difference is the tachometer and the fact that you can connect your phone to it oh yeah i said that i would show you guys on here so yeah you can see the rebels is much more basic much more dim this is actually as bright as the screen gets so that's another one of my gripes but it just has the gear indicator miles per hour time gas it doesn't have any sort of tachometer no sort of fancy phone connection anything like that and then i'll say also going along with kind of the cheap and chintzy vibe i don't like that it's gloss black bars instead of flat black i feel like the flat black vibe over here just looks a lot more classy and the polished look just looks more i don't know cheap it like gives me vibes of my xr150 my xr150 has gloss black plastics on there and has the gloss black bars and that bike is only like you know under three grand so this gives me kind of the same just cheap vibes from that and then another thing that jumps out at me is the difference in wheels and tires on these bikes so the rebel has 16 inch wheels and tires in the front and rear i pointed at those in reverse order but you get it whereas the eliminator has 16s in the rear and 18s in the front and you can see they're much more narrow compared to the bulbous look of the rebel my prediction is that this will handle a lot sportier than the rebel 300 and 500 just because of that difference but we will see when we get on the road oh i'm also noticing that the radiator has this like weird cheap looking plastic surround here that's kind of weird i feel like they could have done away with lots of the plastic on here and made it look uh, a lot nicer like the rebel has a little surround but it's just you know the cover for the radiator it's not like this little weird flimsy thing here i don't know there goes tyler he's the man he's the guy that i bought that bike from and the xr so when you come to preston make sure to ask for tyler and he will get you taken care of and yeah i don't think there's too much more to talk about from a visual standpoint so why don't we go ahead and throw a leg over both the rebel and the eliminator to see the difference in seating position and like i said this is the rebel 300 however the body is the exact same as the 500 so ignore the motor and just picture that it has that motor in it and just pay attention to kind of the seating position in the rider triangle okay so we'll start off on the tried and true honda rebel and just to give you guys kind of some stats i'm about 5 10 5 11 on a tall day and i'm super lanky as well lots of you guys have asked what that means and essentially i forget exactly but my arm span is like 
two to four inches wider than normal. And even though I wear just like regular 32 inch inseam pants, I did measure for you guys. And in these shoes, I'm about 34 inches from the floor to meet. So hopefully that helps. All right, so the Rebel, you guys know I've talked about it before, is uh, more of like, uh, I don't know, it's not a very relaxed cruiser position. It's great for shorter people, but taller people seem to struggle a little bit. Because if I bring my foot up, you can see that it's almost more of like a naked bike or like standard bike footing position as opposed to like being a little bit more stretched out like you normally would be on a cruiser. I don't actually mind it because I prefer kind of the sportier stance and everything, but some people do have an issue with it, especially if you plan on going on longer trips. If you're lanky like I am, it could end up kind of, I don't know, giving you a little bit of hip pain and things like that. I personally never had an issue with the seating position on any of my Rebel 500s or my Rebel 300, but I will say once I upgraded to the Rebel 1100, that extra room was nice. And uh, the seat height on this is 27.2 inches, if I'm remembering correctly. So it's one of the lowest seat heights you can get. Super great for shorter riders and newer riders because there's no risk of having a tippy toe or whatever. Almost anyone can flat foot this bike, which is super confidence inspiring. And then swapping straight over to the Eliminator, I'll say right off the bat, it feels more spacious, but I'll also say that the seat height feels taller than I was expecting. The seat height is, I think, 1.7 inches taller, which doesn't sound like much, but as soon as I sat down, I was like, no, this is like noticeably higher up than it is on the Rebel. It doesn't bother me because as you can see, I can easily flat foot it. But if you're a shorter rider, it might be a little tricky, especially because I'm also noticing the bike feels a lot wider. So not only is the seat height a little bit taller, but your legs are going to be a little bit more spread out. So for shorter riders, it might be a little bit hard to uh, flat foot compared to the Rebel. And then it feels like the reach to the bars is a little bit further. The whole bike feels a little bit longer. I think I was talking about that already. Even though the wheelbase is only like, what, 1.1 inches longer, I think I said, the bike definitely feels longer and bigger. Not only does the reach to the bars feel a little bit more, but it feels like the bike extends further past the bars, if that makes sense. Like on the Rebel, I feel like I could just look over and see the front tire. With this, I feel like there's a lot more bike in front of me than with the Rebel, which makes me wonder, does it... Yeah, I guess the rear fender does feel a little bit smaller than on the Rebel, so maybe that's the difference. Maybe it's longer in the front and shorter in the back. Opposite of a mullet. It also feels like with this one, the bars are much more narrow. Not much more, but definitely more narrow than on the Rebel. My grip is a little bit closer together, but then the bars do stick out pretty far because these massive freaking bar ends. I didn't notice those before. So yeah, narrower grip, a little bit more of a reach, but the seat is definitely way more comfortable from what I can tell. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to put a whole lot of miles on it to know what it does long term, but it does feel right off the bat like the seat is much better than on the Rebel which isn't hard to do. But then again sitting in the cockpit it just feels chintzy. I didn't notice these clamps here before. These bolts just feel cheap as hell. They got arrows pointing up. It just feels like the cheapness of my XR150. And then it's just I don't know I don't like the fact that this is offset instead of centered. I'm not a big fan of the cockpit but it is more comfortable. What the hell is this Spider-Man looking? This gas cap looks wild. Standard issue once you open it up but I mean doesn't this look like some sort of like superhero like super turtle logo? or something. Honestly, the leg position doesn't feel much different than the Rebel. It does feel a little weird though because it feels like your feet sit in towards the bike but the tank is so wide that it kind of like bows your, your knees out a little bit. I'm going to hold myself up on that. Yeah, that's weird. Your feet are super narrow but then the tank is super wide so it's like you're sitting like bow-legged or something like that. All right, well, enough jibber-jabber. You guys have seen enough of the bikes and the differences visually and in the seating position. Now it is finally time to take this thing for a ride and see how it actually does. But first, I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsor of today's video, NBT Clothing. Weather's cooling down. You can see it's nice and cloudy. Fall is rolling in, and it is hoodie season. And believe it or not, this hoodie that I'm wearing right now and the pants are actually protective riding gear. If you've seen the channel before, you know that I talk about it all the time. It's the only gear that I wear because you can look casual while still taking your safety seriously. Everything that I'm wearing has built-in armor and tensile tough aramid lining which is super slide resistant and as this helicopter goes overhead and starts ruining my audio that's a good segue to point out aramid is what lots of police forces and armed forces use for protection so the fact that it's packed in here to protect you from asphalt is crazy and ladies the long-awaited women's line is finally coming out next month keep yourself protected while looking cool this fall and every other season i guess and go to mbtclothing.com to grab yours today and make sure to use code birch for 15 percent off your entire order and ladies stay tuned you're going to love the women's line. Thank you, MBT, for always supporting me and the channel. It's an honor to support y'all as well. Let's get on the road. Okay, moment of truth. Time to find out if this thing is actually the Rebel Killer slash Rebel Eliminator. Let me turn off my hazards. Now, a couple things that I want to point out before we get on the road as I'm sitting here getting the cockpit ready for flight, <laughs> and one of them is the mirrors. I didn't think that it was possible to be any worse than the stock Rebel mirrors, but what the hell are these? Like, look at it. They're, they don't even come out past my hands. How am I supposed to see behind me? Like, it already 
already seems like they're more of like side view mirrors than rear view, if that makes sense. I don't know. They just, it seems like they're like scrunched in the middle. It's weird. Uh, the next thing is that this is the USB-C charger that is an upgrade for the SE model. And it looks stupid. I heard USB-C charging port and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like on my Rebel 1100, it's underneath the seat and it's like super sleek and tucked away. This is literally just this chintzy little bracket that they put on the mirror and it's like this <laughs> weird just box that goes there and then you flap it open and that's your USB-C. So let's say you have your phone mounted here and you want to charge it. In what world do you have a six inch USB-C cable? So what you get one of the like three foot cables and you have to wrap it around your controls and then plug it in so it's not flopping in the breeze and I don't know dude that looks cheap and stupid if I'm being honest but at least it's there you know. All right that's all I got to say. Also, the check engine light is flashing. I think they said something about that will go away once it gets flashed for warranty. So I don't know if that's part of the tech that's in here. Like it gets flashed to the owner for warranty purposes or what. But they said that that will probably continue flashing. So we'll see what that does and hopefully it doesn't affect anything. But let's start her up and see what she sounds like. Okay. There we go. Don't know why she shut off like that. All right, she should be nice and warm. Let's see what she sounds like. That is underwhelming. Obviously, you know, there's strict sound ordinances and everything that, you know, <laughs> manufacturers have to meet nowadays, but like, that is a whisper. All right, shift lever feels a little cheap and chintzy, but it goes into, goes into gear nice and smooth, nice and easy. And we're off, baby. We are off. Footing position definitely feels weird. Oh yeah, you gotta like bring your foot in to hit the brake pedal. I don't know if you guys can see. My knee's on the tank, but then I have to rotate my the bottom of my leg to hit the brake pedal because it's, yeah, it's weird. Oh, okay, okay. Nice and clear, and we are off. I like it. I like it. I like it, actually. It's, I want to say, like, right on par with the Rebel 500 power. Yeah, go for it, dude. You know what's crazy is he just pulled out in front of me, and this is the same spot where uh, on the XR test ride, somebody pulled out in front of me right there. These mirrors suck Tiny cheeks, bro. What the frick is going on there? Uh, anyway, I can tell right off the bat this thing handles a million times better than the Rebel 500, which I was kind of expecting. That's what I was talking about with the more narrow tires and the bigger front wheel. All right, we can't rag on it too much because she's not broken in yet, but uh, power is right on par with the Rebel 500. If anything, it feels a little smoother and soulless, unfortunately, but the handling makes up for it. I can't see sh out of these mirrors, dude. You know how I said that on the Rebel 500, the seat's the first thing to go? These mirrors are the first thing to go. They do nothing. What the f is that? Uh, anyway, this handling is on par with my Scrambler, which um, is obviously should handle much better than a Cruiser. I can't see sh Dude, these mirrors, I can't say it enough. They're terrible. Yeah, dude, you can throw baby girl around. Look at her dip. Way more agile than the Rebel 500. Uh, as you're riding, you can hear like the motor noises more than you can hear the exhaust. So I know I keep saying how bad the exhaust is, but I'd really be interested in seeing it with an aftermarket exhaust to see if that wakes it up. But like, listen to the downshift. Oh wait, you can't, because there's nothing to hear. I literally, dude, the mirrors are unsafe. I can't see anything behind me. You might as well just not even have them. Ooh, I like that little clunk down into first gear. Feels uh, kind of mechanical. All right, let's see what she's got a little bit, shall we? So, it, uh, it definitely pulls nice. I want to say it feels a little bit faster than the Rebel, but I think it feels faster only because of down low like it starts pulling down low and you're like oh i still got all these rpms left and then like midway through it doesn't you know it kind of like stops pulling quite as hard but i like it dude i like it it uh 
everybody always says like the Rebel 500 is kind of like it's meant to be a sporty cruiser, but this is a sporty cruiser. This is way more sporty than the Rebel, but still more comfortable. I thought I would notice the difference in suspension a lot more um, than I am because the Rebel has, what did I say, over an inch more suspension travel in the front and like 0.6 inches more in the rear. But honestly, this suspension, I think, feels better than the Rebel 500. It's crazy, because I'm sure you guys thought that this was gonna be biased towards the Rebel, because I've had so many of them, but I like what I like, you know what I mean? I'm not uh, I'm not here to push my beliefs on you. I'm here to find out what I like. How about some brakes? Brakes are decent, nothing to write home about. I think the Rebel 500 speaks to me more, but I think this is more fun, if that makes sense. This feels cheaper but it feels why am i going straight but it feels like more of a good time the rebel feels like they really did everything they could to make this bike great and this feels like oh they really did everything they could to make this bike fun okay let's ring her out a little bit oh dude it feels really good revving out that far i love the fact that it has a tack so you can see where the red line is whereas you can't on the rebel or the scl 500 for that matter so i love that you can see how far you're ringing it out and maybe that's part of why it feels faster than the rebel 500 because you hear it start screaming but you you don't really know how close you're truly getting to red line so you kind of just shift when you feel like the bike wants you to this you know when you're allowed to keep going oh damn i wasn't expecting this honestly when i first saw it i was like oh it's cheap it's chintzy it's not going to be fun, but um, I would say that the Rebel is put together way better than this, but this is more comfortable and more fun, hands down. <laughs> like, I hate to say it, but this is uh, more comfortable and more fun than the Rebel 500. Now, when we get back to the question of, is this going to eliminate the Rebel 500? And, you know, like, is this the Rebel 500 killer? I don't know about that. I think they both have their places. Not everybody wants something this sporty. And I feel like this looks much more, like way more modern than the Rebel. The Rebel, I feel like is a like modern retro, whereas this is just a modern cruiser, you know? I like this way more than I thought I would. Coming to a stop again though it's a little bit weird getting to that uh to the brake pedal because the tank is so wide but i mean if my biggest complaints are that it feels cheap and not well put together and that the ergonomics of the tank and foot situation aren't that great and that it's kind of a rip off of the rebel if those are my biggest complaints but my biggest praises are that i'm smiling ear to ear and that this is more fun and more sporty and just more agile than the rebel 500 then i think that says it right there i'm pleasantly surprised Surprised. I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Leave some comments down below and let me know what you guys think. Shout out to the Patreon members for making all of this possible. I could not be doing this without y'all. And if you want to support the channel through Patreon as well, make sure to check out patreon.com slash life of birch. And of course, shout out to Preston Power Sports for always, always, always rocking with me when they get new bikes in and let me do quick little test rides so I can teach you guys something. Come check them out. Ask for my guy, Tyler. They will take good care of you. And you know what? If you come here and you buy this exact bike, VIN number 561, if you come to Preston Power Sports and buy VIN number 561 from Tyler and show me proof of it, I will send you a free NBT outfit, pants and top. How about that? And speaking of NBT, thank you NBT for sponsoring this video and for always supporting me and helping me chase my dreams. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch y'all on the next one. Love you. Peace.